Watch me ride. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metalworks. If you remember the last episode, um, or the episode before that, we are making a dragonfly out of this gearbox shaft and I've made this already. If you want to find out how I made this, go back and watch the videos. But obviously I shaped this so I could fit it on. So that makes the body. And I did spend a bit of time off camera just playing through my box of stuff. Um, trying to work out what I could make that would be, you know, would represent a dragonfly's head. This is what I ended up coming up with. I've got a couple of these uh, gears out of a gearbox. And another one. And the idea is I'm going to weld these on like this. So this is the sort of effect you've got. But what I'm also going to do is put the synchro rings on. Now I think, because these are brass, I'm going to probably glue them. Uh, but the idea of the head is something like this. So you know, it looks like it's got big eyes, but it's got that sort of shape. I don't know whether I'm going to try and weld some plate over the front to give it that, that final sort of cap, because basically a dragonfly's head, as you can see, is two big blobs and a blob in the front. Um, but I've got a lot of artistic license with this, so I might just go with a more sort of robotic looking camera lens looking things but yeah I think that's gonna be a cool head so what we're gonna have to do today is we're gonna have to weld this together so we can forget about those for now so that'll be the head uh, I was thinking about the body and I thought well you know dragonflies sometimes have these two little spurs that come off the back end and I thought this just kind of tapers into nothing it should it should end with something so again I went through my box of random bits and I found this which is from Betty uh, and I found this which is from an old XR2i I believe uh, put a bit of tape around here just to get it centralised because it's very close to being centralised but not quite. What I've then done is got a ball bearing and I cut it in half and then drilled a hole in it. It then goes over that thread and then I will fill that little pocket ooh, where are we? Here, little pocket with weld and just flatten it off. Yeah, it's not entirely centralised but it doesn't really matter as long as it covers that hole. Uh, and then that goes, there's a hole here and this goes in here. Now, how I'm gonna attach this in here, I don't know. If I can put a spot of weld on the underneath, that would be ideal, because um, it just goes and it'll be fine. But I don't know what this is made of. I'm assuming it's steel, so I'll probably give it a go. So that's the basic body, and then we've got the head. Well, obviously, that head doesn't belong out here. It belongs somewhere back here. So I think what I'm gonna do um, now the first thing I'm going to do is weld this head together so we've got it in one piece because this is just, you know, difficult to work with. I'm thinking I'll probably end up cutting it off around here and then I might actually shape the shaft with a bit of a U-shape uh, to try and fit around this and then weld all the way around it. I don't know, but what I do know is this head needs to be welded together because it's going to make things a lot easier. We can work out the rest from there. Uh, and we'll weld, weld that tail up while we're at it. So actually the first thing I need to do is clean these with some acetone just to make sure I get rid of all of the grease so we have no contaminants from the welding. I've had quite a few comments and messages from people, actually a lot, of people saying, oh I've got this old piece of bike something, you know, disc or chain or sprocket or something and saying, um, you can have it if you want it. Please, that's what the, uh, the PO box is there for. If you're happy to send it to me and donate it to the Metalworks so I can make things from it, then absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I really do appreciate it. The PO box is in the description, just make sure you send it through Royal Mail, uh, not through Passports or anything, because they're the only ones you can deliver to PO boxes. Uh, and also include a note so I know who it's from, so I can thank you. Uh, but also a note saying where, what it was on, if you knew, if you know. I'm not going for like an anatomically correct dragonfly here. It's going to be an interpretation. It could even be considered to be slightly robotic or, you know, or, um, or something like that. Yeah, I'm not going, I'm not trying to make something that is truthful to life, but then why would you even think that when, when the shaft looks like this? But I just thought I'd mention that. I was going to say, how do you tell the difference between damselflies and dragonflies? Uh, very simple. Damselflies are very small and they don't rest with their wings like this. They hold them up on their back straight like that. So if they've got the wings like this, then it's a damselfly. If they've got the wings out like that, then it's a dragonfly. Um, and also dragonflies are considerably bigger. So that is how you tell the difference between a damselfly and a dragonfly.
wire speed was too high, but actually that little uh, bobble doesn't look too bad. I'll probably smooth off the little nipple. Now if you can see, we can get these patterns matched up here, but if you look further around, they lose sync. They're not spaced out the same, so it means that if you get one bit in, in line, another bit won't be, so we don't need to worry about that too much, but we'll try and get it close enough. When we put the third one on, we'll end up with a pattern like that. But as you can see further around, it looks better and other times it doesn't. So we'll just do it and find the best bit and then use that as the front or whatever. Ah, oh, I feared this would be a problem. Right, giving this is quite heavy and I need these to penetrate well. I'm going to turn it up and wire speed back very slightly. I'm now a little bit concerned thinking about this because I've got two interior walls like this. And when the well goes between, it will expand and then it will, when it contracts and goes cold, it will pull. I don't want it to pull across that way. And there's a lot of force. I don't know exactly what it is, but shrinkage on a weld is in magnitudes of tons or something stupid. But, well, we're just going to have to go for it. The best piece of advice I have for someone trying to succeed in the film industry or any creative space is if you're doing what everyone else is doing, you're doing it wrong. It appears we have a short blown side off the shroud. And we don't have such a clean well. The other side looks so good for me. So there's the first weld, went nicely. <laughs> you can see this this sort of mass at the front here is what the shroud, there's a bit of the shroud actually on its own. But the actual weld above it is fine, so uh, I can clean that up. What I'm particularly happy about is we've kept the alignment pretty much. So now I've just got to weld the other side on. A Dremel and grinder make my welds look finer. It's a new saying. Because you all know about the grinder and paint makes me the word I hate. Sweet. So that is basically done. I still got, when I say things are done, I mean at this stage of done. There's done and there's done. And there's about 20 or 30 dones. And then there's about five more dones after the last done. Um, but it's, it's done. I think the absolute minimum we're going to require is this shoulder. So I'm going to take a uh, cutting disc and I'm just going to hit the top off. Thanks to the support of you guys, I've actually been able to order a new tool that I could have really done with for this, for this project. Um, basically, bending this 6mm mild steel is not physically difficult. Uh, I could bend this by hand. But getting repeatable tight curves or long sweeping curves or just getting something repeatable and easy to sort of manage it's, I haven't been able to do it. I've tried it hot, I've tried it cold, I've tried different methods and I can never get really matched up bends. So I've bought a, a small bending jig um, that can only do is it like 6 to 14 mil bar but I mean most of the stuff I'm going to use is this which is 6 so I'm going to really control the bends in it because I need to make the wings obviously. So I've purchased one of those which will be is due here tomorrow probably the next day. But there is a fair bit I can do up until then, um, so hopefully you shouldn't notice any gap. I won't be left waiting to do anything. Ooh, I think it needs to get a new cutting disc. It's getting a little bit small. Contact. Although I could actually cut through this in one go with that disc, by doing that, if you think about it, how much material you're going to have sat either side of the disc and if you move it side to side how much it's got a chance of snapping your disc exploding and then stabbing you so it's better to just take little nicks so you're not got so much of the uh, the end of the, of the blade inside the material so basically just turn it regularly and cut that way there's a tip I would give I don't think anyone can disagree with that that's tempting to fight. So 
all getting a bit close for that disc for my liking. And if a new one's going to be bigger. This by hand, assuming I can. It was solid. That's why. Jeez. I didn't know how uh, far the hole that goes up here went. Obviously that's the solid part of the middle. There we go, all smoothed off. I've cut off the wrong end. Just kidding. I did that to myself just now. Just looking at this, I'm thinking the neck needs to be shorter. Um, thing is though, I need to uh, weld this neck on. So I can't attach the head yet. I'm going to have to make some decisions of, of which way around this is going and permanently and fix it. And then that may build up a bit of a neck, which might give me more of a taper between the two. So I don't want to chop that off yet. And think about that. But I think that's going to have to be the next thing is to weld this body on and f make a final decision as to the orientation. Because I've got these holes um, that I think I'll put underneath. I don't know if I'm going to use them for anything because they're actually going to be in the wrong place. This is what I mean about you can't plan things too closely. I tried doing that before now, like, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and it's stupid. Uh, anyone who's been doing this any particular time or making anything realises that things go wrong and you have to adapt to those issues. Um, if you always want to try and do it one certain way and it can only be that way, you will spend an awful lot of time restarting again and again and again. So I'll put a tack on this side and that'll pull it across and then I'll have to build up a collar around here um, that then I'll have to smooth off and then it'll have to fall into the head. Okay, I've had a sit, I've had a think and I can't see any reason that I can't weld this on now. Turn the wire speed down just a tiny bit. Build, but I want to. I do want to use all the power to make sure I get a good penetration. I'm going to go round and build a car up. I'm not going to mind that it's going to be a bit overbuilt because I am going to be clear, uh, grinding it down and shaping it to this pin, which is probably going to get shortened anyway. I did try and bring the pool down to meet this surface, and it didn't do it, it stepped out. So I'm gonna have to, I'm now gonna have to do like an undercutted weld around here, just to bring some material over so that I can smooth it all around. It should just make my life a lot easier, and it should be a more gradual um, transition. Because this isn't gonna be structural, this is just putting some material in, and I wanna put a lot less in. I'm bringing the power down, but I'm also bringing down the wire feed. That's warm, that's really warm. Now as I say, I want to get into this angle, so one thing you can do to see if it's possible with an angle grinder is to just get a disc and just hold it against it and see if you can get an angle that you get in without hitting bits you don't want to. And that actually, because this is an older disc, it's a bit smaller, so its radius is a bit tighter, that's actually going to be perfect. Okay, I'm going to have to fill in a bit more weld around here to give me something to work and smooth back in. It's kind of bright. I've given myself extra to um, work with. This is the thing I do love about welding. A welder and a grinder 
you can just put metal where you want it and take it away and then if you mess it up you put it back again you can take it away again and it, it, it's such a permanent thing but it happens in split seconds and in the way that you can use a welder to just create something like build up mass and then take it away with a hang grinder and create something of shape it's kind of like a paintbrush dipped in liquid steel I said that one night once when I was very drunk on Twitter and people laughed at me I don't blame them but when I was drunk it made sense Maximum zoom! So as you can see, I've just put a very small bead over the top of that hole and then I'll grind it back round. Um, someone to help me with this. Can you notice on this one that's just in frame at the top, there's like a little peak. Sometimes when you're in the pool, you'll see like a gas bubble appear out and go and it'll bring it up into a point. Is that because of contaminants? I believe it is. Uh, I think it's like a bubble of gas from the contaminant that comes up through the pool and then obviously pulls the metal with it as it cools and as it thins it creates that little bink. We're going to call this episode an end because the next thing we're putting the head on but we are at a point that it's uh, smoothly attached. As I say, it now just looks like like a little mallet. I guess you could use it as a mallet. Apart from all the weights in the handle, that's the kind of odd thing about it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, don't forget to leave a like if you're enjoying these videos, and if you feel like supporting this channel, there are multiple ways you can do that. There's links in the description, I've got everything from t-shirts and hoodies, key tags, of course the clocks, that's what the metal works is all about, but this is one of the sculptures. And I've also got a PayPal, which is like my equivalent of Patreon, you know, I've got a few people who chuck me a pound, a couple of pounds every now and then. Sometimes people are quite generous, uh, it's amazing. Um, and it means that I can buy tools and stuff. I'm making these videos for you to enjoy. Catch you next time.